So once again, thank you so much for joining uh, wherever you are at in the world. Um, good day, good evening, good afternoon. Um, and thank you so much for joining. Um, my name is Shafkat Nizar. I am a, a product manager with Power Platform Team uh, Developer Tools here at, at Microsoft. And I'm joined with uh, my teammates here, Marcel Fiera and uh, Andrew Petrichuk. Um, we also have Daniel here, um, who's our advocate. And we have Angela, uh, who's also my teammate here. So uh, feel free to ask any questions. But uh, before we go on with that, let me uh, make sure that we um, we set some perspective here. Um, our focus for these office hours, this is our first occurrence. And uh, uh, our focus is uh, purely developer tools for Power Platform. Um, so if uh, you have questions about other Microsoft products, um, feel free to um, share questions. We may or may not be able to answer, but we would be happy to um, forward wherever we can. Um, I assume you guys can see my screen. So let's start with our introduction. Um, what is Power Platform uh, CLI? Uh, and, and why I'm digging into Power Platform CLI. Um, this is, uh, as I mentioned, focus more on uh, developer tools for Power Platform and for professional developers. If you are using uh, Power Platform CLI, great. We love that. We love to see you adopt more of it. Um, and if you're not, if this is your opportunity. Give it a try and uh, give us uh, your feedback. So what is Power Platform CLI? Um, it is a developer tool to interact with the um, Power Platform um, for the environment, solutions, portals, um, and such, virtual agents. Um, you can also utilize uh, co-pilot capabilities that we are introducing in, uh, in the CLI as a preview for right now. Um, it is available on cross-platform um, on win as a standalone um, install for Windows uh, on Mac OS and Linux. Um, and under the hood, if you are um, using Azure DevOps um, or you're using GitHub Actions, you can use um, uh, this uh, under the hood from GitHub Actions for Power Platform, as well as the Azure DevOps build tools. So they're kind of the wrappers on top of uh, Power Platform CLI. Um, you can also use it on Visual Studio Code as an extension. Um, and we will have more things that are coming up. We'll, uh, we'll share that, um, that are G8 already. Uh, now, how you can use uh, in, in Couple of the areas where I mentioned is uh, Azure DevOps developer tools, build tools, and uh, GitHub Actions for Power Platform. Um, and these are some of the capabilities that are shown. Feel free to um, go and try it out when you're building a pipeline in build tools. Go ahead, look for Power Platform um, build tools there. I uh, encourage you to use version 2.0. Um, we have Power Platform Actions in GitHub Actions. Um, so yeah, that's to start with. Um, we just um, released our latest update of um, PAC CLI is what, what we nickname this Power Platform CLI. So when I refer to PAC CLI, it means Power Platform CLI. You know, we'll try to keep that short a little bit. Um, so from that perspective, we just did a release um, hot off the press. Uh, you can go ahead, uh, download from a NuGet uh, uh, website. You can uh, also go ahead, add as an extension that would be coming up uh, in, in Visual Studio Code. Um, and some of the capabilities are, um, you, if you're on a Windows platform using as a standalone, uh, uh, install for PAX CLI, and it's a same tenant that you have. You can use the create service principle. You can use the SSO 
uh, which is available on Windows uh, for single sign-on. So no need to create additional auth profiles on a Windows platform standalone. Um, you can deal with, uh, you can do a lot of uh, component framework interactions. You can initiate, you can do all the push. Um, so all the PCF, which is a short for Power Platform Component Framework, um, and uh, we have pipelines. We've introduced pipelines for Power Platform, not to be confused with uh, Azure DevOps pipeline, but this is um, a way of um, uh, um, your ALM for building your uh, CI/CD pipelines and such. Um, also, uh, these days when uh, some uh, Power Platform users are uh, looking to modify uh, their uh, environment settings, um, and uh, they would have to go through manually through the user interface, clicks and, and such to go find the setting. If let's say you're in a different part of the world using different currency symbol, let's say that by default, it defaults to a dollar sign USD. You want to get that changed. You have to go find that particular setting and make the update in the UI. Well, this way with this uh, list and update settings uh, within Pax CLI, it, it makes it very easy you can list the, the settings, look for the one that you want to change. You can update that um, right from there. I added a, excuse me, I added a short link uh, at the bottom of this slide where you can uh, conveniently go and uh, download the PAC CLI and then learn more about it. Well, I have a short demo, uh, less than five minutes. Um, this is showing the co-pilot capabilities and that are available uh, in preview today with um, within PAX CLI. So let me uh, start this demo here. OK, and where is? Oh, there it is. OK, uh, no. Went on. And this is the one. Oh, OK, well. It's not playing for me. For some reason, my demo is not playing, but I will be happy to share this particular demo. Um, now, moving on to the next thing, I'm moving a little bit uh, faster here. Um, stop me if it's a little confusing or I'm moving too fast for you. Um, I would be happy to, and, and uh, my teammates will be happy to dig in further. Um, but uh, I want to make sure that we get through this presentation and answer any questions, any challenges you may be running into. Um, so with that, um, being on a power platform, uh, you're developing applications um, or, and, and you are using uh, somehow power FX. It's the expression language. Uh, so I have some questions. How are you using power FX today? Feel free to raise your hand. Um, type in chat. I'm I'm very interested uh, in in learning from you guys. I'll give a maybe a minute here. And then okay, well, uh, so from uh, your usage of okay, there's uh, Thomas is here. Let's see, uh, Thomas, go off of mute and please uh, do ask a question. Hi again. So uh, <clears throat> I've used the uh, PowerFX for two use cases, except for Canvas apps, of course. Uh, one of them is the new low code plugin feature, where mm -hmm. I really like the experience. But uh, what I would like from the tooling perspective is that I would have the PowerFX editor, which is also open sourced on the the Monaco UI to be present uh, in VS Code mm -hmm. with the extension because I can export those FX expression com solution components with my solution and I can mm -hmm. technically edit the formula uh, in my uh, IDE, but uh, there is no like linting or anything. So that would be nice. And uh, other than that, uh, we've played a lot with the PowerFX SDK. 
that my Ike stall is driving. And that thing is just awesome because we've built a lot of uh, plugins where we have uh, customizable uh, business logic for authorization rules where the security model of Dataverse is just not meeting what we need for some very complex uh, insurance policies uh, and, and stuff like that. So we've managed to build a uh, solution on top of that, so that, that is great, but again, there is very limited support and VS Code or, or tooling for that. Okay, so what I hear is you're looking, uh, you would love to see um, more places where you could utilize uh, PowerFX expressions and logic um, for quick ma manipulation of all these different artifacts that you're working with, right? Um, yeah, generally, I would really like to have the editor from the SDK uh, mm -hmm. shipped with the our platform extension. That would make mm -hmm. a lot of sense to me to Great. be able to Great. edit it in VS Code. Great. Um, we have one more hand up here. OK, I think that was you. I'll just go ahead and put it down. OK. Um, all right, well, this is good to hear. Uh, looking forward to that and then um, uh, I do see some comments uh, how uh, you're using with buttons and table columns to populate fields. Um, that is really good to hear. Um, then obviously you probably are using with the UI if possible or uh, through the uh, Power App. Um, but yeah, that and then what I would like to know is what are challenges you're facing with the um, Dataverse uh, data edits? because all of your data that you're pumping into Dataverse through your applications and different capabilities of Power Platform, um, how, how are your, how is your experience with the data edits? Anyone? Or are you able to edit data or you are editing data or not? Okay. Are you asking about power effects in uh, particular? Like, um, you know, it doesn't have to be power effects. Or... Yeah. It doesn't have to be power effects, but any data that you are pumping into da Dataverse, um, if you need to edit that data, that how are you editing? Yeah, Bye, sir. Yeah, I, I saw your message. you doing yeah. uh, like uh, you you catch you. command, something like that? In I edits. think I have two people. Yeah, Marco. Okay. We have okay. We have two hands. Um, so I don't want to mispronounce it, but it, that's a uh, Cervenas. Uh, we yeah, that's that's correct. Uh, I was ahead. just asking. Um, uh, do you mean by editing? Do you mean um, uh, like using the patch command for FX formula? It doesn't have to be a patch command. For example, um, you have a custom table in Dataverse and you need to modify um, some columns, some rows, right? Some records you want to modify. How uh, how is your experience today? OK, I'm not really comfortable with using the command because it's it, it's Sometimes it's not easy to use like filter with lookup with all these things together, but I have succeeded to do so, but it wasn't easy for me like in .NET uh, code. So mm -hmm. it's a different experience. Okay. Um, all right. Well, uh, yeah, I think uh, that's a, that's a good feedback. Um, that's what I'm I'm kind of looking for is uh, what type of experience you you guys are having. Okay, um, I think Thomas, you had your hand up uh, also. Yeah, I, I just wanted to give you an answer that I'm usually using uh, data flows, those which okay. are part of the our platform experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also, we're using a lot of XRM toolbox uh, utilities mm. for that. Okay. So, okay, yeah, data flows, you're using the Power Query to go ahead and uh, um, import data or update data. Is that true? 
Yeah, so if it's a like large amount of data, uh, yeah. Power, Power Query can or data flows can use the alternate keys uh, mm -hmm. for upserting. So we mm -hmm. can pretty much modify the data uh, as part of the Power Query uh, step and then yeah. pump it back and upsert the records. Mm -hmm. So that uh, that is all through uh, uh, what you call the UI based and you're doing all the uploads and, and modifications. Yeah, all right. Unfortunately. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, feedback taken. That is great. Good to know. Um, all right. Well, let's move on to the next one. Um, well, we recently GA'd our uh, capability, uh, Power Platform as a connected service uh, for Visual Studio. So um, feel free to take that if you have uh, take a look at that. Um, if you have any questions, uh, my partner here, uh, Marcel. Um, he was leading that uh, for the GA part of it. Um, I'm I'm very happy that he is here. And if you have any question, uh, let's have questions for him. I'll give five minutes. That's okay, Shafka. We can keep going. Okay. If people All have right. questions, they can put in the chat. All right. Excellent. That sounds good. Um, so. Um, let's see. This is for um, for folks who are not using um, Power Platform for their enterprise apps um, and automation needs. Um, share your thoughts in in the chat. Um, but yeah, that's something I, I wanted to uh, just put it out there. Um, food for thought, and and feel free to add this information to the chat. Um, I also wanted to. Um, share some additional uh, capabilities. If uh, if you have not tried it, feel free to go ahead and give that a shot. Uh, we have uh, Power, um, actually we have pipelines in Power Platform. Um, you can go ahead, build uh, your pipelines for your uh, Mm, uh, solution management or where you go from or you have a particular solution you want to um, uh, make your updates in a developer environment and then move it to uh, your pre-prod or uh, sandbox and then from there to production so that's another capability you can also once you have it all set up in your uh, pipelines for a power platform you can use a uh, uh, paxi alive for uh, deploying it um, you know, with with multiple settings, you can uh, play around. You can list the pipelines that are in your environment, um, and uh, you can you can start uh, interacting with them. Um, also, like I mentioned before, there's copilot capabilities uh, in uh, that are in preview in Pax CLI. Um, the, right now we have is list uh, capability, which is listing all the um, AI builder models that are available on your environments. Um, it will also do uh, predictions for you. It'll do fetch XML that today you're using XROM toolbox or chat GPT for your fetch XML. Well, you can utilize that with the co-pilot capability. Go ahead, give it a try and share your thoughts on that. Um, I also mentioned as a standalone install uh, of Pax CLI into uh, multi-platform, uh, Mac OS, uh, Linux, and Windows. Uh, if you're on a Windows platform using same uh, tenant and your um, uh, authorization profile, you can use single sign-on capability on Windows platform. Uh, uh, we also worked on uh, bringing the uh, create service principle capability for right from the PAC CLI. You don't have to go into Azure portal, create your application uh, app ID and you know go through the all those different uh, steps on the UI. You can just use a create service principle uh, right from the command line. Um, also, uh, you can uh, the custom uh, connectors right on the pack cli you can uh, create an update using scripts that you have um solution checker results it used to be able to ver uh, just show you in verbose mode now you can save them you can review them later you can modify uh things as you like it it'll help you um, refine your uh, uh pipelines on that part power pages you can download you can upload your uh, uh power pages uh, these capabilities and i also mentioned this uh listen update org settings capability um so yeah that's kind of the 
stuff that I wanted to go through, but um, now we're ready for questions. Um, some of the questions that were submitted, uh, let me just go through it really Shop quick. Up. Yeah. Just before we get the questions, we have a few hands up. Okay. Oh, just... excellent. Yeah. All right. So we have uh, Hassan here. Yes. Good go afternoon. Ahead, good morning. Good evening, everyone. Uh, thanks so much for the feedback shared, and thanks so much for what you have addressed in. It's really awesome. You guys are doing a good job. Um, you mentioned in the last slide the the work in your automation part with CI/CD and uh, GitHub and uh, Copilot and such. Uh, the support for this part uh, is it only for YAML-based support or also for classic pipelines? In this case, this is the first one. I might assume that it's only YAML, but could be other otherwise. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, it is correct. It's it's yes. YAML. Yes, that is YAML, uh, son. Yeah. YAML. Okay. So in, the, yeah. in in that in that case, uh, YAML based. Uh, okay, doing that, and we all know that uh, data first or data manipulation could be hard at some point. Are there some extensions, uh, for instance, available, or will be some extensions available for this matter on uh, on marketplace in order to get that integrated with the pipelines, or is that something that we can build system uh, from, from our teams, for instance? So do I understand correctly that you want um, your your questioning about the data manipulation through um, uh, either pipeline or through the command line? Is that true? In the, in the pipeline in this in, in this case, but if it is doable uh, via the pipeline, do we have already some extensions available or uh, are we free to go and just uh, uh, develop our custom extensions in that sense. Okay, answer. You want to, uh, Andrew, go ahead. Yeah, I'm not sure if you're talking about Azure DevOps extensions. If you are, we do have it on Marketplace available. Yeah. And uh, if uh, Shaka can go a few slides and we show the diagram. Uh, so, uh, like Shaka showed, uh, yeah, the, the, the diagram. Uh, okay. We we do have a Pax CLI tool, but we expose it through yeah this one uh, either through uh, Power Platform build tools uh, extensions oh, okay. which are available on uh, Marketplace, or mm -hmm. also GitHub Actions which is also available through GitHub Actions Marketplace. Uh, okay, okay, yeah, this, this okay, this, this one makes sense. I, I missed this one, uh, yeah. but it makes and sense to me. Um, or does is the slide deck can the slide deck be uh, shared with us, guys? So that we can uh, take it for feedback or? Yes, and just a quick, quick note, all these repos are actually uh, open source as well. So uh, you, you can actually contribute your own GitHub actions or uh, build tests as well. Cool. Okay, thanks. Thanks for the feedback so far. I will uh, put to reach out uh, to you guys uh, offline so that we can discuss even more about it. Sounds good. good. Now we thank have uh, Yenka. Yeah, thank you, Hassan. Yeah, welcome. Hi, Yannick, sorry. Hi, so um, I have a question around security and authentication. I love that you're adding more support for um, service principles in this whole thing. Um, but currently my problem is that service principles or application users or, or managed identities or whatever are limited to a specific um, environment because we have to give them a security role inside an environment, which also means that if I want to create a service principle and put it in an environment, I need to authenticate with the PEC CLI with a user that has the permissions to do that. Now, is it planned or is it on the backlog to uh, create a security role type of thing so that I can have a service principle in Azure that can do all of that, like org-wide, tenant-wide, so I can authenticate with a service principle and create an environment, um, add a service principle to an environment so I don't need to authenticate using uh, a, a user account. So if you create an environment with a service principle, that service principle already has permission to the environment because that is the owner of the environment. Yes, okay. but if but you, can I do that already at this point? Yes, that that is code we shipped like 
three years ago. So if it isn't working, please let us know. But that's exactly. my that's my but that's my question now at this point. All of these um, service principles, um, what permissions do they need? Because to create an environment, a user needs to be a Power Platform um, admin or a Dynamics 365 administrator. It needs that user role. Huh. What security it, role does a service service right. principle need? It depends on it depends on the your tenant. It depends on the configuration of your admin team. It depends on the kind of environment you're trying to create. Uh, so what I would say is take a look at the environment's uh, documentation, mm -hmm. and they will talk about what roles are required, what AAD roles are required for various things. Uh, so it is possible today for your tenant admin to set it up in such that any user inside the or inside your tenant can create environments, but they have to set yes. that up. If they yes. set that up, that means that a service principle that you create as a user should have permission to create an environment. Okay, that confuses me, um, but I will check it out. Um, because I don't think this is very well known because there are also uh, some commands inside uh, PAC CLI that do not support any service principles at this point to do the actions. And also that has not yes. uh, documented very well. So that's pretty confusing. And we see some people trying to go full service principle um, yep. for authentication, for uh, app only authentication and doing these actions that are seeing failing uh, Power Platform CLI commands. Um, and the, the error message on that is, is confusing. It doesn't okay. say that it's not supported to do it with the service principle at this point. Fair enough, fair enough. That That is coming from the fact that the PAC CLI is fronting several different services. And depending on the age of the service and then depending on the uh, purpose of the service, it may or may not support service principle uh, authentication. Uh, discovery, as an example. Uh, discovery does not support service principle based capabilities and frankly, it will. it's unlikely it ever will because that sort of defeats the purpose. Uh, the, but you, you, your, your feedback is well taken and that the, the error is, is, is probably not clear enough to say that you need a, a named user for this, so. Yeah, exactly. So that's where, <laughs> the, that's where the confusion comes from. And then people abandon service principles, which is um, a sad thing because they should use that as much as possible for their app only authentication but because of the the resulting error message it becomes complex for them to figure out uh what the actual problem is and that it needs a, a user account and then they give up yeah, so that's enough. uh that's potentially a, uh, an improvement that could be made and i will look into um the other actions with service yeah, principles if, if that is if, if environment create is not behaving correctly, please, or i.e. it's not letting you create them when you should be able to create them, please let us know. Yeah. That is something we want to look at. Um, if you have any documentation to share about that, that would be great because I've been through all of that, I think, and this is not something that I found or saw or um, have encountered. So maybe there is a documentation issue around this as well. Maybe, sure. potentially. Sure. No, I, I believe that. 100% believe that. So. So I'll, yeah, thank uh, you. I'll check. I'll check with that team and see. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you, Yannick. Uh, feel free and thank you, Matt. Um, very helpful. Uh, if you could share uh, your email, or, or if you can drop us an email, we'll be happy to stay in touch on that part. And I think we have uh, Matt here who has his hands up. Oh, I actually posted my questions and get on them in the the uh, chat. All right. Well, around managed identities, you're talking about service principles, but um, not just. I, I actually, I, I do have a question on that. Um, managed identities in the Power Platform seem to be lacking considerably. We really, I, I for one, would really like to see more support. Is there any talk about that? Uh, again, which which part of the Power Platform are you not seeing support for? Well, uh, Dataverse Connector. Can't use managed identity. Dataverse connector cannot use managed identity, i.e. 
from a flow to Dataverse. Correct. That is correct. Yes. Okay. Fair. Is in, in connect, I, I should actually say connectors in general can't use managed identities today. Yeah. Is there uh, about and, that support over? Uh, well, the focus right now is getting service principal support in general working for all of connectors. Uh, once connectors generally support service principal, then managed identity would come behind that. OK, thank you. Yeah, if, if, but if, if the question is specifically on connector authentication, yes. Yeah, th this is a this is an active area being worked. And, then, uh, and yeah, and so I would imagine then that support would then be brought into the PAC CLI. <laughs> Hopefully that's a pipe dream, but. In so far as configuring the connector for managed identity. Yeah. Yes, that work would come as part of connector setup. And again, that's actually active work. The team is is uh, actively working on right now in conjunction with the rest of the connectors work. Fantastic, thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, connectors just for the group. Connectors are our number one pain point in any deployment process. We know it, we hear it, we are trying to solve it. And it is, it is just, it, it, it's oil, water with gasoline poured in on top of it because connectors are designed for, they were designed entirely around an end user scenario, not around an automation scenario. So we are, we're doing some pretty crazy redesign to get them to play properly. So that's what's taking so long, folks. Sorry. All right. Thank you, Matthew. Uh, and thanks, Matt, for bringing the question. Um, I think we have uh, Juan next. Uh, he has his hand up. Go ahead. We cannot hear you, Juan. Okay, can you hear me now? There you go. Yeah. Yes. Uh, great, yeah. thank you. <laughs> thank you. Okay, I have a question. It's probably not related to these topics. Uh, we are just starting developing some, some mobile applications connected to the uh, Dataverse API. And, and we don't know uh, how many requests we can send. Uh, we would love to know if there is any documentation where we uh, can understand how many requests, I don't know, per hour or uh, how, how that works. No. So Dataverse API limitations for the request. Correct. Right. OK. Uh, Matt, maybe uh, Matthew. That's, yep, that's a thing called Dataverse service protection limits. Uh, that is actually publicly documented along with our rate limiting and the sliding window and how it's calculated. Um, in a second, I'll drop a link to you in the chat. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you, Matthew. Yeah, thank you, Juan. I think you had uh, submitted this question. All right. Anyone else? There was, while we are waiting, um, uh, you feel free to raise your hand up. Uh, if not, then I can go with some of the questions that were posted. Ralph? Hey there. Yes. Um, so um, the one thing that I was looking for at some point, now that all these tools are finally done and all the pieces, it feels like, uh, is there anything left to do th that you're about to come out with that uh, we probably should have a, a warning about? Uh, because right now I'm, I'm already seeing an answer over here, some of it. Um, oh no, that's something else also. I'm trying to get what the definitive workstation for a, a developer should look like. Um, and so far I have the pieces, right? The Visual Studio Code, uh, the proper browser to do all that stuff, the extensions on Visual Studio uh, uh, Code, mm, Pack CLI perhaps downloaded, um, which, however, the prerequisites for that so far. Is there anything else missing, like maybe certain tools like, like the Dataverse Accelerator or like the Creator Kit, those kind of things? that are part of this view for those folks. <laughs> GitHub code spaces, there we go. <laughs> GitHub code spaces. So, I mean, these are like, the idea is to have the ideal setup. What are they so that when we go, as they say, we need to provision somebody to get all set up, we can go and say, yeah. this is what it is. 
and not like come back later. Oh, we also need this. That's when the you know the people paying don't like us so much. So, so let me thank you first, Rolf. Uh, we I think we had a chat this morning, Marcel and I. <laughs> so thanks for joining us here. Um, yeah, well, I believe, but I'm going to have um, other feedback here as well from uh, other input, but it depends on um, the the business that what uh, they're trying to achieve. Right. But uh, and all these tooling is based on the goal that businesses are trying to achieve. But right. I'm going to let uh, Marcel and, and Matthew and Andrew, uh, yeah. I'm going to let them chime in. Yeah, I can comment a little bit on that. It it really depends on on what you want to achieve, Rob. Uh, I think as 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 Matthew mentioned, like Power Platform, we have several components. Yes. And uh, PaxCLI, it it brought this philosophy is a one stop shop for the developer. So yeah. every time we do an uh, an integration, we will use PaxCLI for that. So for example, even Visual Studio, uh, the new integration that we have relies mm -hmm. on PaxCLI. Yes. Right. And also, there are some developers that they like VS Code. Some people would prefer Visual Studio, and that's fine. For example, for plugin, plugin development, C sharp plugins, you can use either. You can use Visual Studio or you can use VS Code. Yes. So basically, I think my answer to that it is depends on you, the community. Based on the feedback that the community has, we will do our best to meet where you are. Okay. So, um, the I'm going to consider Visual Studio the the full the full the full monster versus the uh, how do we say it the light version VS Code it's not really light anymore because once it's on the web and 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 AI powered it's just to me it's just as powerful um, the idea is like for the ideal setup if you're doing development in anything that means if you need to do connectors what kind of what kind of tooling would you need if you're working with power pages what kind of tool you need and so far we are coming to like a magic. Uh, a magic in between. If you have VS Code, at the least, you can literally do anything. There's nothing that's stopping you that says you must now go to Visual Studio, the full version to do. I mean, like, there's no, like, for example, like, before you had to go, like, get the, the, the full power of Visual Studio when you had to do, like, testing on machines. We don't have to do that. This is all services stuff, right? So, technically speaking, have extension, have Pax CLI, you're good to go. There should not be anything else, but that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for other tools or other maybe additions. Maybe there's extensions that are uh, that are uh, recommended to be added in. Uh, like, oh well, you're doing web stuff, then you better have maybe the web extensions that come come uh, come with the stuff. That means if you're doing it in React, you do it with that. Make sure you have your pieces. That's fine and well. But I'm looking for anything that's more Power Platform related. When I say Power Platform, I really mean it across the board. If it's Power BI, in, a part of but more likely apps, uh, flows, uh, bots, and um, and pages, of course. Those are the only ones that I know that are right now in this world. Uh, if that's the case, is there any other tool that we may be looking for, maybe missing? Or is it a case of once you have that, uh, we will keep throwing toys in that direction. Don't worry about it. I see. So... I, I, ideally, we want to be inclusive, obviously, yes. and also we want to make possible for you to work with Power Platform components anywhere. Yes. That's why yes. we do support code spaces, for example. GitHub Code yes. Spaces is a way for you to get the full uh, PEC CLI support and work yes. with any component. Okay, So yeah. that's the first step is about enabling. So in terms of enabling, yes, PEC CLI will enable you to edit any component. Yes. But there is also the productivity point of view. And that's where we have other tools such as Visual Studio, the, even the native extension or the new integration, et cetera. So that's, the, the, that's why we have so many tools. It's about productivity. And that's right. where I say that the community will drive that. Uh, depends on the usage or the tools or the dif difficulties that the community is having. And these are the ones that we will prioritize. All right. So, are there any other productivity tools, at least from the Microsoft perspective, that are being provided other than, of course, the community is doing all. There's a community extensions, for example, for a whole bunch of stuff. Mm -hmm. Is Microsoft providing any more productivity tools that we should be considering besides Code Spaces and uh, VS itself? Seems like uh, that's pretty much where all your goodness is going to come from. 
Well, we are always uh, again looking on your feedback. I can I, I cannot comment on the specific tools. Like, do we have any other tools coming out? Uh, not in the short term, but we okay. are looking on improvements for a specific components. So, for example, PCF is one component that we have been paying attention. Um, in the next release, you will see we just added support. We started to support mono repo which is a way to make easier for you to create PCF components and avoid to download dependencies for each component. You can have all the dependencies, only one repo. So things like that, that are helping the community. That's why I say we were keeping the feedback and iterating on that. But specifically in your question, there is no specific tool coming out soon mm -hmm. uh, that I can tell you now. All right, but nothing before that October 1 is saying. Yeah. So, okay. <laughs> so, so Ralph, Ralph, I think I think one of the things that we we probably should be clear about, and maybe just to the community in general, yes. we in the past, and it's still to this day. So I I, I don't want to say this has changed. We have focused on enabling the community to fill holes that we don't have capacity, time, or focus to do. Okay. Mm -hmm. As part of that. We've provided a lot of foundational capabilities, foundational yes. tool sets, things like the service client, things like the plugin registration feature sets, the solution packager as standalone modules. OK, uh, and now we're shipping the model builders as standalone module because we've got a community out there that's built a bunch of those types of tools uh, loosely based on the uh, on our code base. The 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 direction though that we're going is more of a consolidation route Got it. okay we are trying to start to use the pack cli as our gateway for accessing these kinds of extensions where if you're if you're using the microsoft provided goodness and the behavior that works yes. pack cli is where you're landing there's still going to be accessory tools plugin registration the they did it the schema generators for the data migration tools and other things like that whether or not they remain clients or turn into web apps or turn into things that we, we surface through other vehicles, TBD, but the, that that area will continue to exist. OK, Got it. is there a good place to like see a, a, a list of those particular tools that are at least known? Yeah, or is there's it a case a, of like uh, getting a GPT masters to give us a list. No, no, no. It's there's actually a list posted. Um, uh, it's a relatively current list that's posted on the developer center for uh, Dataverse. Nope. There. OK, so you've just given the first most important tip. Of the day developer center for Dataverse. Yep. All right, and that actually lists that. In fact, there's cross references out to a bunch of community tools as well. Um, but but the point I'm trying to get as what I was essentially saying is that while while I'm not going to say that tomorrow a new pack tool, pack CLI tool is going to appear, it's highly likely that we'll continue to ship additional modules into the pack CLI for purpose specific things. But the tool pack CLI will continue to go and it will continue to update. Got okay. It. Great. That's, so, yeah, that's just, what I was hoping to hear uh, that essentially things are, are coming to where they can be more easily integrated or let's just say familiar with each other in the way that the rest of the tooling works and you know the way they've been doing it on the for a while now on the spfx side and all the other pieces uh the more consistent helps it's when it gets all mixed and mishmashed out because yeah the community is trying to help but then uh, let's just say a point of view may not necessarily be microsoft's point of view and it's the case of the cheese <laughs> not just moving, but taking a migration to a whole new continent and getting a new identity, and that becomes a pain. So I'm just trying to mitigate that's, that. That's a good feedback. Yes. And uh, I, I just posted in the chat a link for our official documentation with the list of the tools that we have. Yes. And uh, and uh, yes, that was a good reminder on the chat. We, we are just releasing the test engine too, which is a test for you to automate test for Canvas. Yes, please. Um, so. All these tools, they should be listed in this page, but uh, Matthew also shared uh, some good content. And yeah, I I agree with everything that Matthew said that, that was a spot on. Very good. That's that's all I needed. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ralph. Thank you, Ralph. Yeah, so just one other thing. Uh, the link Marcel gave gets you there 
to where the uh, Davers tools are. Uh, it's the last link in that list, but there's a couple of clicks you have to go through to get to it. So I'll post the direct link to where the tool list is. Uh, it's under the resources section of the Dataverse developer space and then the community tools and the testing tools that the community or, or that we have shipped are listed there as well. Okay. Thank you so much. Sure. Excellent. Thank you, Matthew. Thank you, Rolf. All right. Anyone next? We have last 10 minutes. I think we've answered most of the questions that were submitted uh, uh, within this chat and as well as the uh, presentation. Roberto? Yes, sir. I, um, I have a question about the data flows. Um, I want to know if it's possible to load pictures from uh, to, to Dataverse uh, with uh, data flow. And my second question is uh, if it's possible to use an FX uh, column in Dataverse as part of a, a roll-up uh, column, another uh, column uh, roll-up. So the first question is, if you can upload pictures to Dataverse, right? Yeah. And the second question is, if you can use FX expression um, in the table roll-up, in the record roll-up, yeah. right? Exactly. Okay. So anyone wants to take a first question here? Uh, Matthew, Andrew, Marcel? So image, uh, are you asking a data flow specific question or just a feature set capability question, i.e. can Dataverse accept images? Um, my, my problem is that I need um, pictures from Business Central and then the only uh, way to, to use uh, uh, the pictures is from uh, data flows. Got it. OK, so this is this is actually a data flow specific question. I can't speak to what their current capability set is there. I'd have to send you over to talk to the data flows folks. Uh, but the, the data Dataverse absolutely accepts pictures in variety and actually scales them uh, and stores them as blobs. So the, the underlying feature set is there. And if data flows doesn't support it right now, I think it's probably just a feature gap that they're going to close. Okay. All right. Great. Thank you, Matthew and uh, Roberto. On the second question um, that you had for the FX expression for the data uh, manipulation for Dataverse. Now, today you can do it with the UI. I'm going to take a jab at this. Today you can do it with the UI from the uh, from your Maker portal. However, uh, is is the question that you want to be able to do it from command line or what is the challenge you're running into with that? Uh, because uh, when when I use the, the one FX uh, column um, uh, as part of a roll up uh, column, another column, um, told me a, 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 an error that said it's not possible to use it. I don't know why. Okay. Uh, if it's possible, I try to do more, 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 more tests. So, um, at this time, I would say hang tight. <laughs> Something I'm I won't be able to discuss um, discuss at this forum, but uh, uh, we we hear your issue here, um, and uh, so we'll we're working on a solution for this one. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Hi, Yannick, uh, you have another question? Yes, I have two more questions now. Um, Go ahead. One is, uh, I love the build tools, I told you so, uh, but last month we worked with a customer that doesn't have DevOps online, but has DevOps server. And we had a problem installing the uh, build tools actions in the DevOps server in their local installation. First, is that supported? Is that the ID that it should be able to be installed in there? Andrew, you want to take a jab at this or Matthew? Um, yeah, I think you should be able to do that, but we are, I don't think we're testing it, um, this scenario particular. Yeah, so our problem was that if we install it from marketplace, then it times out 
Um, mm. And when we cheat it, and there's like an internal way of calling the marketplace API to get the VSX, VSIX package or something mm. to install it, and we upload it ourselves, then the DevOps server complains that it's uh, too big and too uh, whatever to get it installed. So it would help us a lot if you could look into that or have a okay. way of for us to to install that um because also one of the things that i noticed for the build tools is that uh, at some point you stopped uh, making the releases in github so there was the latest release that shows up in github is the september refresh that was posted in october 2022 and that one still had the uh, vsix of the 2.0.8 in there mm -hmm. and we can install that one in the devops server but that's a mm -hmm. very very old version that I okay. really don't want to install anymore. Yeah. We can look at refreshing this one. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. That's and the other one is a, yeah. yeah, thank you very much. And the other one is a bit more joking is if we're getting close to uh, moving away from .NET 4.6.2 for plugin development. Um, I think that's mm. question to my yeah. yeah. I think so can come. I, I did make a comment about this publicly. Uh, a little while ago, um, and, and I'll essentially repeat what I said um, in, in written form. I, this is an area that we're actively working towards. Um, it I know everybody's like, hey, you know, geez, it's been out, 4.8's been out for ages, why haven't we upgraded? There are extremely good and practical reasons why we haven't done this, and it has a lot to do with our security infrastructure, okay? Uh, this is something that we are actively working towards. Uh, it is not something that you're going to see us do in the short ter term, i.e. in the next six months. Um, it is uh, and likely what you will see us do is provide begin providing support for net for eight first. Uh, before we go any further. Um, we are working through most of the infrastructural components actively, and you're seeing that in the fact that, for example, PAC CLI is a cross-platform tool. PAC CLI is riding on top of a lot of our other infrastructure components, the data for service client, the underlying libraries that it uses, which are now being built cross-platform. We are not shipping those as standalone libraries for your use in plugins or anything of that nature because our servers don't support it yet. Um, but it is actively being worked. We're slowly bringing the pieces along. The other thing to keep in mind is that when we're thinking about these decisions, um, those of you that are new to our ecosystem haven't had to deal with this yet, but those of you that have been around here for a while, uh, you know that we have hundreds of thousands of plugins, millions of plugins written going back as far as V5 that are running in our online system. OK, so we have to make sure that when we start moving all of this forward, we don't break existing customers. We don't want to force you guys to go recode stuff just because we had to take infrastructural changes. Uh, so that's that's basically what I said. It is coming. Um, it is something we're actively working on. It is not something you're going to see in a short term period. You will see it happen incrementally. OK. And then one day we will throw a big party and say, hey, we're doing this. We're on this version. And everybody rejoice. And then everyone will look at us and go, that's great. What about this? <laughs> what about this version of .NET or that version of, of a node or whichever? Uh, so it is it is something that we are actively working on. Oh, wait, but don't get me wrong. I totally appreciate the problems of the history of the platform to move forward and to make those changes. We have a couple of hundreds of plugins uh, running with customers, maybe thousands, and I really wish you don't break those either. Um, but I will just from time to time ask the question sure. on the progress and see where we're where yeah. we're moving to, because ideally at some point, but you know this, um, it would be great to be able to do the cross-platform plugin development and move like the old .NET Core type of thing um, in that direction. So we don't need the framework anymore. 
I'm sure you know this, but from time to time, I will pose a question again and sure. see where the I, um, the progress goes. And we see the progress. Don't get me wrong there either. Yeah, so I, we get I, we get I, it. Absolutely. I mean, there's motivated self-interest on our side as well, uh, just simply from the point of view of the operational costs and the uh, and our ability to do some horizontal scaling that we can't do today. Um, I, I, when it starts to happen, it will happen in a very similar way to what we did with WS Trust when we deprecated that authentication model. Uh, you'll get notice. I mean, we actually put the infrastructure into support J uh, uh, support uh, AAD authentication back in about three, four years before we started the deprecation noise for WS Trust. And then we moved on it in about a year. So that's pretty much what you'll see us do with this. Cool. I'll get back to you in six months then. Sure. <laughs> Hopefully I'll have more to say in six months. So. Well, it's much appreciated. Thank you very much. Well, with that, um, I want to uh, thank Matthew for um, his input and uh, his support in this, Andrew, Marcel, um, and a whole Microsoft team here. Thank you so much. And, um, and a big applause to all of our partners that were able to attend and provide some feedback. Hopefully we, this was helpful and uh, looking forward to the next one next month. Uh, in the meantime, feel free to drop us any questions uh, on the community um, uh, uh, link that we sh uh, we will share in this and we will share the uh, recording as well so thank you so much uh, you guys have a great rest of your day evening night uh, thank you so much thank you bye thank you all bye, everyone. Bye. thank you bye guys see you later soon